Okay. Um, welcome everybody to Six Scales. Uh, it's January 6th. It's actually 2022. Um, the notes are in the chat. Um, present yourself as an attendee. Okay. Um, Andre, uh, go ahead. Uh, Ask on the chat window, uh, uh, we need to have that feature call it. Uh, sorry, how to exit full screen here? That is called virtual machine pools. Uh, and I was talking to the community in the community meeting uh, last year, and they told me on version forty nine, this is going to be part of it. Uh, can someone confirm that? And when 49 gonna be released? Sure, so 49 got uh, released with the release candidate yesterday. It will get released officially, uh, most likely next Wednesday, so the 12th. Uh, the virtual machine pools implementation exists today. There's some changes occurring with it though in the future to be aware of. Um, so one change I'm working on is that the hash algorithm that's used to determine when pools should be updated, uh, actually update their, their virtual machine instances and things like that. Um, I need to change that because I made an error in my calculation there. Uh, the other one is that we're gonna be adding new features and things like that. You can adopt it now. Uh, I would not put it in production until um, this hash issue has been resolved um, because yeah. the result will be if you update your version of QVert while you have a virtual machine pool in production, you run the risk that all the virtual machines in that pool will restart during the update, which you, you probably we, don't want. We are doing proof of concept right now, but we would like to access the release candidate if it's possible, you send me the link, okay? It's on GitHub. Uh, so just look at our GitHub project page. It's in the release artifacts. Okay, okay, I'm gonna see there. Uh, I have another suggestion here, and I would like to uh, be clarified. Uh, are you aware about instant clone from from VMware? I'm sorry, what the clone? Instant clone. Uh, the the way that VMware do uh the the cloning okay i put on the chat window a pdf public pdf how it works uh if you go on the page five uh i would like to 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 talk to you in central there um exactly how it it works uh it is a uh in you on on paragraph two you instant code use copy on write from memory and disk management. And uh, the, this is very, very fast. Can you explain what is happening with the uh, pool today on Covert? Because- yeah, Certainly, yeah. So th this isn't something Covert specific. This is the storage backend. If you were using something like Ceph or um, Cluster with, um, what's essentially uh, we, we call the feature smart cloning so when you create a golden image of your disk let's say it's a windows virtual uh, disk and then you want to uh, start a virtual machine and you define that golden image as your source for your data volume and you create a pvc off that what's happening in the back end if everything is set correctly on your uh, storage provider is that it's creating a really quick smart clone of that um, that initial PVC, and then any writes that are occurring are that's the only thing that's being um, changed. Like that's the only thing that's that's happening is writes. So it's storing the delta between that original golden image you had and uh, the changes that are per VM. Changes are per VM, uh, and behind the scenes, can I use something uh, Rook and Ceph with the duplication, or not? With the duplication, what do you mean by that? I'm because sure. this is something uh, we have Windows clones. 
most of the image are <laughs> the same. You understand? And the, the, the duplication of, of certain files happens on the storage. Ha have you experienced uh, use something like that? Still don't quite get it. Du duplication of... Uh... The duplication. The duplication. Uh, we was thinking to use a solution that is called VGO that uh, was doing uh, that on top of Gluster, but as recommended by the, the community, we moved to uh, Ceph with Rook. Uh, and the, the duplication uh, can uh, decrease the amount of storage needed up to 85%, because at least <laughs> that amount uh, is the same in all the clones, you understand, of Windows. So this is a storage feature, deduplication. I'm yeah, I'm not familiar with it. And let's see, what is this doing? Um, it's we're gonna use, algorithm. We, we are we're gonna use it, and if someone already try it, and we're gonna use it a lot. And the other part that I didn't understand: Can you open back again the first link, uh, 97, uh, 67, 17? that I send on, on the chat window. Yeah, that one. Uh, exactly. Can you go go down? Uh, oh, no, the, all the explanation is, is up. Uh, the first line has a, a link, then you need to click that explains everything that I need here. Initial implementation found here. Uh, I would, can you go down? How to, uh, no, go, go up a little bit. How to update the, the images. Uh, update strategy. Can you explain a little bit more? Uh, uh, because let me explain you why we update every week the golden image and when we have a new Im golden image how fast this happening what is the best strategy because we are a, a non-persistent vgi when the users log off we just kill the machine i would use opportunistic so what would happen is um somebody would uh, log off of their actively running virtual machine instance. And then uh -huh. the next time that VM starts, uh, it would use the new updated image. So right. You're, right. you're updating that virtual machine when it's convenient to do so. And that means when the virtual machine is offline and being restarted. Yeah. Um, that does not exist yet, by the way, that feature. We, not, we have not. the code to to do this, but the API and everything hasn't been uh, implemented for uh, managing this update strategy yet. We, we only have proactive to make it clear. Uh, the proactive only is for injury during the update. This is fine also if we, we, we uh, provide some information to the user. Okay, uh, we, we plan on fleshing out this feature set uh, in the future. It's just um, for the initial- Is there something uh, we can collaborate to have the opportunistics ready? I'm sorry, what? I, I missed that last uh, part. We, we have 70 developers here doing everything. <laughs> and we probably can do some coding uh, to make this solution happen, okay? The opportunistic. Sure. That would be okay. great. Uh, and also uh, the missing part, since we have 100 clusters that has uh, each one up to 1,250 nodes, we plan to have a central repository of the templates for all the clusters. Uh, did you have that already implemented or not? Central repository for all... Are you just talking about where you're going to store the manifests? The, the templates, the, the golden image, what we call here. Sure. Uh, 
What's the question? Just maybe clarify today, that. Today you install uh, the, 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 the files on the same cluster, but we need to point to a central repository that all the clusters can get the same file. Got it. Okay. Uh, as long as the, the, the central repo or whatever can be accessed uh, via something like HTTPS, then it mm. could potentially work. Uh, oh, it's oh, gonna... HTTPS is very nice for us. Uh, okay. This is how it's, it's working today, or you push from HTTPS or ENFS? If the repo exposes these golden images as files that could be downloaded over HTTPS, um, then you can access it from any cluster. Uh, and you would just put that as the source of the, the storage in your data volume template. The, the download link. The problem with that is that you won't get smart cloning with that. You're doing a, a complete That's copy. That's why I'm asking you how to have the smart cloning and also the central repository, you understand? Sure, so you'd have to expose that central repository, uh, all the golden images, as PVCs within each cluster. And I, that's not something I've seen done before. Uh, okay. So you'd have to share that across every cluster and represent each find image out, as a PVC. We're gonna find out and gonna publish something how we have done, okay, here. Um, the only last piece uh, 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 of solution that we would like to share with you guys, uh, we need to create a pool with several flavors. Uh, did you plan to have that kind of feature? No, uh, each pool would be identical replicas. So if you wanted uh, multiple flavors, it would be a pool per flavor. Mm, but there is a way to, con because let me explain you why. Uh, can, can I share my screen? Yeah, sure. Uh, you need to make, make me presenter. Oh, uh, I'm not trying to do that. Let's see. Yeah, I can share now. Yeah, okay. Um, let me explain you my pain. Uh, this is the Kubernetes cluster that I have convert on it. For every 10,000 concurrent users, uh, I have two domain controllers because this is a, a problem of Active Directory handle only 5,000 each domain controller for you understand. But since uh, every cluster, can, we offer 12 flavors of desktops, the cluster is going to have between 157 to 1,250 uh, 1, nodes. Because uh, for you understand, uh, if uh, all this, the, the, the VMs use type one, I divide 10,000 by 64. If I have all the users using type four, I need to have all the users. This is why 157 is enough if everybody is type one. But since this is a mix of, of VMs in the same cluster, uh, these need to be dynamic and I can go up to only 10,000 because the Active Directory, the limitation. Is there a way for we control that uh, across all the pools in the same cluster? Yeah, I think you need to, I think you need to, so one of the design, other intentions was that the object encapsulates similar VMs or, and, and so that if you, so in other words, you like your, you know what your similar VM count will be, and you're just going to move that up and down. So I think what you need to do is to have, at least for now, a controller that manages this. We we talked about doing something like 
I mean, we called it a fleet, which is kind of another abstraction on top of this, but it's not something that at least was in scope for, for doing pools. So this is something that I think that you'd have to have a controller that, that deals with this, kind of moves the pools up and down based on demand and the flavors you need at a certain time. Or don't don't put more uses in the same in this cluster. That's our goal. You understand how to monitor for what you're saying. The, this means that we're gonna have twelve pools because we have twelve flavors uh, on the cluster, and then I need to control that. Can you help us to to know how to how to know how many users are being used on this specific pool in real time if you want to know the number well i mean i, I don't know about the number of users i mean i would go by the based on your demand number, like in number, number of of uh, uh like we have a pool of up to uh, uh 10 uh 10000 users okay mm -hmm then I need to know in this pool, how many are being used? Because I have like three VMs ready for the next user to log in with, for instance, or something like that, okay? I believe that's Great. application specific. I'm not sure how that doesn't really, it's like the layer above the infrastructure. Okay. To know what a user is, what no, this is my, my control. This is my control. The missing part is how to know in this pool how many uh, VMs are being used. I mean, would because, they be like, so you have, I'm assuming you have some that are like pre warmed, right? Like, so you yes, can save state. Warm. Okay. I mean, yeah. perhaps you could use some labeling. I mean, th this was sort of one of the, um, like, we, we do some things with labeling kind of with the scale down, kind of with this in mind. So maybe like, as part of your, um, as part of your, I don't know, your inventory, the number of users that are active, maybe you use some labeling to differentiate the ones that are running that are there for pre-warmed and the ones that are actually actively being used. Mm -hmm. This is not ready yet in the code. Well, this is, I, I like David was saying, I, I don't, this isn't necessarily something that um, I, think has to do with the pools, like the VM pools, because kind of what you're asking would mean that the VM pool object would have to know when one of your users is using the VM. And that's that's something that maybe is a little bit outside. I mean, I think it's a little bit outside of Kubernetes, it's a layer above. Okay, no problem at all. <laughs> Just for know where I need to touch uh, to, to, to make it happen for us, okay? Yeah. Yeah, and I would say like in, in Andre, like, and what I want to reiterate is like that label, the reason I'm recommending is because that's that's exactly where I think we're, we're like, that's where we're going with the scale in strategy. Like they, um, with, uh, where do we have it? Um, the selection pot, where, I don't remember. What's it called, David? It's the, um, I'm, I'm not seeing it. I'm talking about the, uh... The order we use the labels yeah we'd use the ordering is it the selection policy maybe i forget oh order. here it is so order yeah, yeah. like we use order policies like so basically what we want to do is we eventually when we do when, when you want to do scale in andre like you you don't want to scale in like if you want to lower the number of vms you have you don't want to kick users off right so use the no. labels as a way to to avoid uh, kicking active users off, like maybe you want to reduce the number of warm seats that you have, pre-warm seats. So target those first. So labels is kind of the direction we're going here. So that's that's where I'd point you. Yeah. And the last question is about live migration. Uh, are you working already with live migration with GPUs on it? So that would mean... Um, if a node goes down, the users are moved to another node without interruption. Interruption. But the all the down. Well, once on. the node goes down, we can't live migrate, though. But you're saying when we're uh, gracefully taking a node down, so draining a node. One of our um, mechanisms today is that we have the ability to live migrate virtual machines off the node that's being drained, so they stay alive after the node disappears 
I don't remember the state of whether we can migrate GPUs right now or not. That's something that I keep hearing. Light migration about. working without the GPUs. The missing part is with GPUs. If it's not done, we need to, to finish the code. I don't think that works because there's state in the GPU, like the, the memory of the GPU, I don't think is uh, synced during the migration. I, I don't know how that would work right now. I know it seems like it would be possible, but I haven't heard that working yet. I could be wrong. That might be something for the mailing list uh, if yeah, nobody I see knows that. Here. Some some months ago, and nobody answered about that. Oh, really? So yeah. I would take that as a no, then that it does not work. If if the virus responded, then, then can we know who is responsible for live migration on the the, the project? For we talk with him. Oh, there's lots of us. Uh, I think that if you want to talk about GPUs and live migration, the person to talk to would be Vladek. Uh, he's he's really knowledgeable about GPUs and migration. So he would be able to give you the latest and greatest there. Yeah. That's most what, what I need to know. We're gonna, for you know, we are putting in production these as soon as possible. <laughs> and we're gonna have 1 million concurrent users on the solution. Nice. Cool. Uh, I have done the interview with CNCF about the community and it's helping us a lot for you know, okay? Excellent, yeah, awesome. we, need, we need that to get incubation. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, out from incubation. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, yeah, Andre, we have, um, I, I'm trying to find, we wrote some, uh, here they are. I think these were the, we wrote some of the extra items that we still have for VM pool. I'll, I'll copy them up here some work items that were um, had there outstanding. These are things that, you, like you'd mentioned, if, I think we know these aren't implemented yet that we want to do, that if you have resources, things that we, we, have could, it. Uh, we can look at. We can do it. Uh, perhaps you can point us where is the code to be changed only, <laughs> okay? Sure, I mean, we can collaborate, you know, however, however you want, um, but, uh, I'm yeah, gonna I talk. Mean, I'm gonna talk with the team, and we're gonna back here and talk to you guys uh, how how to implement this for yesterday. Sure. Great. Uh, thank you so much. Go on. Let me stop to to boring you <laughs> with my questions. Thanks, Andre. Okay, um, David. I, I saw your note. You have to drop now, or uh... um. Well. I've got to prepare for another meeting. Uh, I, I wanted to say something real quick about the pools um, because it's something that kind of happened uh, late last year before we had a, another meeting. I discovered, so we had that hash algorithm changes uh, bullet point in there that you'd put. Um, I, yeah, I discovered an issue with how I was calculating whether a virtual machine instance needs to be updated or not. Um, that introduces some risk. So I'm, I'm making some changes, they won't, exactly be backwards compatible. Um, so the API won't change. So your API, if you use a virtual machine pool, you can continue using it. But the behavior of how the proactive update will change. Uh, and the risk here is if you adopt virtual machine pools today, when you update to some future Qvert release, they are all going to update all the virtual machines are going to be restarted, whether something uh, actually got updated or not. Uh, and that's because I need to uh, change this half algorithm so that won't occur in the future. <laughs> um, I'll create a bug for that. I haven't done it yet, but I've already started working on the code and I'm, I'm hoping that I can have it out uh, in the next week or so. I'm kind of slammed with a lot of different projects right now, but I definitely need to get this out. And uh, it's actually pretty involved. It's complicated stuff. So this is a big, code-wise, a big change uh, that requires a lot of testing, but it will make it better. It will be much better when I'm done. Okay. All right. Okay, good save. <clears throat>
Okay. Is there anything the other... uh, yeah. before? Yeah, since I, I probably need to prepare for that presentation. Is there any topic that we could jump to that I need to be involved with directly or? Um, I can I can talk these two at a high level and maybe you can tell me. So like the 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 only thing I wanted to do with the performance results was to go through them. I mean, I think we can um, I mean we can take this one. I, we can do this offline. Um, I think the only note I saw was that it we partially worked because I I think I saw like I posted in chat. Yeah, and then this is back um the we we're oh we we're over 100 or right around 100 now we're down again so i'm not sure why it makes no sense uh, maybe yeah. maybe this is the wrong uh method for us to use if we can't get accurate counts from prometheus i mean it's not even close <laughs> yeah yeah okay yeah that's that was that one the other one was, I was kind of hoping Marcelo was going to be here because I really want, Marcelo and I talked for a while about tests we want to do in the load generator and kind of the importance of them and, and kind of how we go through them. And we came up with two um, from last time, but um, we can, so this is kind of a long topic. So I can, we can save this, say, you know, for another time, or probably next week when you're back, we can kind of go through this. Um, Okay. I did have a question about that. I saw Marcelo was working with Cube Burner more. Is that going to replace the load generator that we put in the Qvert repo? I'm not. I'm not sure yet. Um, I think the jury's still out on that. I, I, we okay. need to talk about it because I, I really like. To me, like when we when we had a conversation about like we we have we we still have a lot to do here. Like with the two tests that we outlined, um, we. There's a lot we can kind of outline some goals. And I, I think I think we just need we were kind of trying to get an understanding of the problem more than what we want to solve. So I think once we have a better grasp of that, I think we can make a decision on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, the other the other thing, um, I want to open more some of those documents. Oh, I already have it. Um, Marcelo actually pointed to a few interesting things that I really want to look at in the coming few weeks, or at least talk about. Um, I, this one was kind of really interesting to me um, because so I saw so Marcel found the uh, Kubernetes did some work um, measuring a few different um, type of things that affect scalability, and um, one of the really interesting ones was this. He, he has VM churn here and. Um, it actually, what what this means is uh, the number of verbs or like API requests that are made will have an effect on scale. And this is this is pretty reasonable. Like this is what we'd expect. But they um, the community had quantified this um, in a number of different ways that I think we can actually leverage. Um, and it's something that I think we could focus on because we already have now the metrics that give us the number of creates updates and deletes. And so it would be, um, I really want to focus kind of, you know, once we get a hold of this, you know, these metrics in the periodic, starting to get accurate counts and, and look at this more closely to see if there are ways we can reduce this. I think actually having thresholds is kind of where I want to go with this, because if we know it affects scale, the number of requests, then it's something that we should monitor and make sure that we're within a threshold. Yeah, certainly. Uh, that's been, um kind of the theory behind that whole threshold monitoring for the, yeah. <laughs> the thing that doesn't work, unfortunately. Uh, the kinds of problems that we find is we get into like quick update loops and things like that, where maybe two components are fighting with each other to update an object and they keep overriding each other or things like that. Uh, and then they stabilize, but that's like all unnecessary. We didn't need to do all that like kind of update storming and things like that. And when that gets multiplied by you know thousands of virtual machines, uh, it becomes a bigger and bigger problem. Um, so yeah, we definitely want to shrink the number of API requests we have per a VM uh, during the life cycle of the VM. And that's a that's probably one of the most important things we can start monitoring. Yeah. Yeah, there's that one. Um... And then there was another one I saw VMs per node. Like there was a few of these that were really intriguing, but I think um, ultimately, and there's also a namespace like 
pods per namespace um, has an effect. So there's like a number of these things that I think I could totally see being their own tests and, and then having their own thresholds around and so on and so forth. But so it's really good to see because um, it actually provided a lot of clarity in terms of like things that we suspected. So what's good is that I think like, you know, we're going to start by kind of talking about the problem, defining this problem space, and then um, and then really getting a grasp of like kind of building these these periodics and I, yeah, but anyway, it still starts starts with this first one. We got to figure out like just the first one with this uh, the number of pre requests and, and get that one working. But while well, we talk about the other ones, so that, I think I think we'll probably take it's going to take some time. I think to sort that out. Probably another meeting or two before we have kind of our full answer on on what we do in the slow generator. So okay, all right. That's pretty much all I have to talk about for um, for both ones. I mean if do people have any other items? Um, we got another thirty minutes. Do people, have any other items you want to discuss? I need to drop. I'll let you guys sure. uh, keep going. Yes, I have one oh. question. Is there a way to have live migration across cluster Kubernetes cluster? I think you need to. I think you would need to do export. I think is the because I don't know how one API server would have the ability to accept the incoming objects from another one. I think you'd have to export the VM, but I mean, at that point though, I don't, I don't know if it's live migration. So, cause I think you, the, the status needs, isn't running anymore. So I, I would say no. Okay. Because this is something that we, we, we was talking to, to, to do. It's possible to do on top of VMware and Citrix solutions, but mm -hmm. not on top of Kubernetes. Right so, now. okay. So, wait, well, so can you describe like what you mean by it on top of VMware? So this is like in VMware, this is they have to like, you know, how does it look like? Because the language here is we're saying two separate they, clusters, like what would this mean in like, yeah, we have a controller of the cl clusters and they have uh, when they the cluster needs to be shut down completely they have a way to move uh all the load from one cluster to another in uh, there is some downtime like milliseconds but if the two clusters share the same disk space uh, mm -hmm. they, they they are able to 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 make it happen I see. So there's the the same this space. So I mean, could this be? I mean, is this live? Is it? I mean, in terms of would we would you call this live migration or would you call this like creating a new VM and the new cluster with the same or very similar disk? You know, not exactly the same. You know, state in RAM. Like it's just kind of a pre-warmed disk that suddenly just inherits the load. The goal is to make the user doesn't know that something goes wrong. Like if he's a freeze for one or two seconds, this is almost nothing for him, okay? And everything back, oh, it's back again. <laughs> something freeze, that, that can be a network issue or something, okay? And then everything yeah. back again, this can be very nice for the user perspective. So, I mean, I guess my perspective on this would be that if you can have the shared disk available across both the Kubernetes clusters, then you'll have the opportunity to have identical VMs on both. And so then really the challenge is that um, the traffic, well, it's not only the traffic, but the, you know, any sort of states um, that may be like occurring on one and going to the other. In one place, uh, move and then, <laughs> uh restart let's say we need to, to sync the memory that's the issue okay yeah i mean it's not so i mean it sounds like it sounds like i, I think you need to go through sort of an, an, an export process especially for the for the memory because like so at least for now i, I could say like this because this is something I've, I've looked at um like there isn't there is some snapshotting work going on um but i don't the live snapshotting work, um, I think, is is still work in progress. So, like, meaning saving the uh, taking a VM, taking a snapshot of it while it's running, taking a, a VMI, taking a snapshot of it while it's running, and, and saving RAM. That that isn't that's still a work in progress. So, I think you you need that first, 
And then you need to take that snapshot and you need to have it accessible by the new the new cluster and then you know do the restore over there. So I mean in theory it's there's a way to do it. Um, I don't know, I guess you could call that export, I, but I, I don't know if it would classify that necessarily as the same kind of live migration. I mean, you'd have that, you'd have a you definitely have a pause in there while the new VM starts up with the, the new state and yeah. restores. Can you put uh, on the chat window uh, the guy that uh, I can talk to regarding the live migration of, of, of GPUs? Yeah, that was um, Vladek. Um, I don't know how's, I don't know Vladek's last name. Let me see, Vladek. Oh, we're here. This is uh, this is black. Great. I'm gonna find him on this slide. Thank you so much, guys. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, hey, Marcelo. Marcelo, you're doing? Hey. We were talking earlier about um, a few changes in VM pools, and then um, about uh, the periodic chat, Marcelo. It didn't, uh, didn't quite uh, do what we expected. So this is not where we don't have a hundred pod creates, unfortunately. So I think we still need to do some work here. And then um, and then I think, so next week, uh, Dave was here earlier, we were talking about this. Um, I think we'll, he was actually, he, he was asking me about, you know, what your perspective was with um, QBurner and with um, if we we're gonna go that way. I mean, did you have an answer? Do you have a, do you have an idea at this point? Or I was thinking we were gonna maybe talk a little bit more about this, the work we're gonna do here before we decide. Or I don't know. What do you think? Um, well, yeah. So like, um, just to motivate like the two different tasks that we, we want, and then we were discussing many scenarios yeah. uh, last last time, but. The idea is we have a burst test and a steady state test and uh, with sex, what's actually Kubernetes doing. So they have both tests. Um, they both measure different things. One, it's, it's like, you know, have different use case, but burst test can be a use case like uh, some nodes, uh, you know, fail and then they, 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 they goes back. And then when they goes back, they will try to create, recreate thousand of VMs, you know, um, and you know, so some nodes that 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 fails, or or a user can want, want to create like a, you know many VMs per uh, in a single shot also one thousand I don't know, and especially when we have now this VM pools and it can be also have uh, use case for the the burst, what we, we are calling batch here, but burst, burst is more Kubernetes, uh, you know, nomenclature, especially because it has, you know, uh, every, everywhere they have the burst and, and queries per second, you know, yeah. just to define things. Anyway, so we have the burst and and then, then we have the steady state that, it should be how the how the system behaves with a constant throughput. Okay, so we we'll have like a cycle of let's just hypothetically, okay, twenty VMs creation per second, and when the VMs, we, then we have like a maximum number of VMs that we can have in the cluster. When we reach the maximum, we start to delete VMs, and then recreate the ones that's been deleted. You know things like that. So it start to cycle. And then it's measure how the system behaves in this throughput. This achieves the steady state scenario. So that's what I'm saying, steady state. Um, yeah, this I is the one, the second one. The steady state one is, I think, is really interesting, especially to VM pools. Especially because if you do any pre-warming, for example, like you're going to have a, a constant a number of users in your zone, and then you're going to have pre-warmed no, uh, VMs. So you're going to have some some you're gonna have a fairly large capacity constantly 
-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's something also my, more people are interested in that. So I just came from another meeting um, uh, generally. In we Red are very interested in, on the statistics you're going to have, and we want to do the same test for our load also for you know. Andre, um, how many, out of curiosity, how many VMs uh, are you guys like running or planning to run in production? Uh, something around, per uh, oh, per cluster, something yeah. around uh, 10,000 uh, VMs per cluster. Okay. What's like the topology of this cluster? Like, are you, are these VMs like in their own namespace? Are they, um, all in one namespace or they're like kind of what's your approach um i can share the screen and and, and i'll show to you just one second okay. let me open it again the reason i'm asking um andre just so you know like because uh, what's what's interesting to me is be, um at least um like uh, people are going to like i know like for me i can speak for um, kind of what we do internally, like this is something that you know, we do and we're, we're interested in how others are are doing their large scale testing and we kind of eventually want to write some guide or some notes around this because I think, you know, we're discovering different challenges. So we're wondering how people are doing it and how they're solving these problems. Yeah. Uh, uh, are you able to see my screen? Uh, on our solution, the users came to our portal and through our VGI, we access uh, first our API that's gonna control like uh, how many users are in each cluster. And then we have the VGI broker nearby every, uh, every 10,000 concurrent users. If you see here, the VGI broker, talking to every 10,000 concurrent users. Because we have uh, the limitation of Active Directory that need to handle every domain controller need to handle up to 5,000 concurrent users, we, need have, we have two controlling every 10,000. And that's why we have uh, a VPC with 10 subnets. Uh, every subnet handling 10,000 concurrent users, the this, this single VPC handling 100,000 concurrent users. Uh, and to scale that, we have overlapping for IP uh, of IPs of then slash uh, XX slash eight. As you can see, for every 100,000 concurrent users, this is how we uh, scale the solution across the, all the regions. And also how these VPCs talk to these VPC that uh, is handling our core uh is over fully qualified domain name like app.ds.global or something and they accessing over like a valid ip of a public on the internet but only accessible from <laughs> the internal uh let's say uh, ips <laughs> for you understand okay like yeah with, so uh, the x the single sign of solution the applications streaming solution that we run on top of, of the desktops. Okay. Yeah. One of the questions I had was that, um, like, did, how does this look in from Kubernetes perspective? Like you have the VMs, you know, what other, you know, are these all like, how are these namespace, for example? Yeah, I can show you that. This is general view. Uh, and, uh, and with that, you can start to understand. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see, uh, we have a namespace for every domain controller, for every domain, for you understand. This is how it ha it's handling, for you understand, okay? The same way we have a cluster for every 100,000 concurrent users for the file server, and they sync each other across all the file servers. 
because at any time any user can access any can be uh, logging in in any uh, uh, cluster and and at uh, and also at any region behind our file server this is uh, was developed by us we have the blob storage and we actually this is a cache file server but the user sees as a, a file regular file server for you understand how these skills okay so is that uh, if i'm reading that correctly is it like you're having about is it 20 um vms per namespace is that what it is if you scroll up a little i think this is for the domain controller yes Okay. But as you can see of the desktops, we have up to 10,000 on this, uh, not, uh, this other cluster that this is, uh, I was showing you here, the relation with, with, between this VPC and the one VPC that is handling that. This is only for a, a zoom on a single VPC. As you can see here, uh, it's a single VPC here for you understand, okay? How this is talking to each other. Okay, so you have we have ten thousand per VPC, and then uh, multiple VPCs. A uh, hundred thousand per VPC. Okay, divided in ten subnets. As you can see here, we have one subnet with ten thousand users. We have ten subnets in every VPC. Mm -hmm. You see, see VPC zero, one, and uh, up to nine. So I think that would, would that be 10,000 VMs per Kubernetes namespace, I think, because each namespace should have its own subnet. We're gonna have uh, something around 100 clusters that can go up to 1,250 nodes each cluster. No, I mean, um, I mean, um, I, what I'm wondering is um, uh, a little bit lower, like at the, I was just wondering, because at the, like in one, in a single cluster, um, yeah. I was wondering how many of these VMs per namespace. Like, is it? I think it's a single namespace with ten thousand. Yeah, ten thousand. Yeah. Okay. That's what. I, that's what I got. Okay. And the nice. maximum number of of VMs in a single node gonna be sixty four. Okay. Okay. I see. Any other question? No, that's pretty cool. Have you? Um, oh, actually, one other question. How? How like? Have you guys have you guys seen any issues at this scale? Like when you have ten thousand VMs in many, namespace and many, many, many. okay. <laughs> have you reached this scale? Like, have you actually been able to we like the cluster already, held up? Uh, we have we have tested two hundred thousand concurrent users already, but okay. we are prepared to move our current user base from the old version to the new version, and this is why we are preparing infrastructure for one million concurrent users. Okay, and also we are sailing to the end user market. We don't know the success we're gonna be there because, for you know, we're gonna offer our service for free. Uh, how this is made? Let me just show you one thing. Uh, the alpha version is already in place, and as you can see, the users can log in and. Uh, when when they are logged in, they can choose between one of the twelve flavors we have, for you understand. And after that, uh, when they are running out of credit, they can click here, see a thirty seconds video, and grab some credits. If they see four videos, they can use the entire service for free for uh, of Windows for thirty minutes or Linux for one hour because. Linux is always half the price. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> now you're starting to understand how we are making the solution scale and scale big on top of convert. Mm -hmm. Marcelo, are you Brazilian? You look like a Brazilian accent. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <laughs> I was thinking the same. <laughs> Yeah, I am. You are Brazilian. Great, great. Yes. I'm Brazilian and German also. <laughs> uh, nice. Well, 
uh, nice to, to know you guys. I, I plan to, to always be as part of, of these meetings. If I can con contribute with something, always ask me. Uh, uh, we plan to put our, our effort to build what is missing for we make it the solution work. Uh, if you can point us on the right direction, what is missing to code, we're gonna code it and give back to the community because convert help us a lot to make our solution a reality. Nice, that's great. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, well, well, yeah. I'm only. Uh, issues. I, I'm it's only unhappy with uh, Red Hat because they stopped to develop a uh, Spice protocol, I, and I like that so so much. We are using RDP remote desktop session right now. That's was something that I was. Oh, this is something we need to revisit sometime later to make it happen. <laughs> Spice is better than RDP from Microsoft. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. Well, I uh, I don't have any more items, everybody. So if we if there aren't any anything more to discuss, I think we can uh, adjourn a few minutes early. Okay. okay. Thank you all. Thanks for time. Thank everybody. you guys. Bye bye. Oh, just just one comment. Oh yeah. Um, Go ahead, Marcelo. Yeah. So when you when you guys attend the meeting. Maybe it's nice you put the name, you know, in the, for example, Andrew, maybe you can put your name here. I'm the, trying, yeah. but I have something wrong. I'm not able to edit. Oh, you need oh. to join. Um... I join. I, 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 I and uh, Andre. Oh, it's working right now. It's working. Yeah. yeah. Was well, not working in the last meeting that I, I went for for conventions. Normally, we write our nickname from GitHub, but it can be a bigger name also. I, mean. uh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, please add yourself. We it's important just so know. That I think that my nickname on uh, on GitHub is. No, don't worry. It's it's you can put anything here. It's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, any other topics? Okay. Uh, I would like to ask ask everybody to test our solution when we release the beta version. Uh, is there a best way to do it? So yeah. If if you want to, so Kubevirt has a, a demo session, and if you want to show a demo, especially just, you know focusing the solution, saying, "Oh, we are using Kubevirt, and this is how we deploy." No, I want our service for free for the developers of Kubevirt. <laughs> so then, in the demo, I would say in the Kubevirt meeting. It, it, more people join, so I, that's why I'm saying you can show here for us. It's fine, but I say in the the in the Kubevirt meeting, it, it's more people join there. I don't know, but many people, you know, hundreds of people maybe. On Wednesday. On Wednesday. On Wednesday. Okay, I went that so, uh, yesterday, but was late. Everybody was out already. <laughs> oh, I see. So well, uh, and also send them send an email maybe to the main list. No, we always read the main list. So. Oh, great, great. I'm going to send that. Thank you so much, guys, for your time. Great. Thank you all. It was great. Have a good day. See you Bye. All. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Nice to meet you. Bye.